Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you the chain stitching feature on this Singer 631G here. And we'll go through the differences between the chain stitch and the lock stitch style of stitching. Lock stitch is what you uh, generally have on most sewing machines, like this one here is actually set up for lock stitch at the moment. And you know, that's the pretty standard stitch type that you get on most sewing machines. But what I wanted to show you was the uh, chain stitching here. So we'll just we'll take a quick look at the manual here. This is actually a manual for a 611G. I don't think I have a manual for a 631G at this stage. I've, there's one on the internet. I just thought I'd show you this first though. That's the 611 is the flatbed version of the 631G. So we've got the free arm here. So for tubular sewing, for good for uh, sleeves and you know doing cuffs and pant legs and tubular type work. And the uh, 611 here is a flatbed version. So identical really, uh, but just flatbed. The only difference I can really tell from the picture here, just below the bobbin winder, there's a little bit of uh, detailing on the plastic there, plastic cover. Whereas if you have a look on this one, it's, it's just a uh, smooth surface here. That's the only real difference I can see between the two, apart from the flatbed and the free arm, of course. I do like this here, you know, the just the confidence, oozing confidence here. The best sewing machine ever built by Singer. And yep, to date, uh, this is 1965, I think. Definitely, as far as reliability goes, I would say probably still one of the best machines ever built. Full stop. Not just by Singer. Uh, so yep, ultra reliable. Uh, quite versatile. Uh, so, you know, uh, everything you need pretty much just about. And here we have one of the selling features here. You've got the lock stitch and the chain stitch feature. And you can see the lock stitch there. They're showing that the uh, black top thread interlocks with the lower bobbin thread, the white bobbin thread there in the lock stitch scenario. Whereas the chain stitch is a single top thread system. We'll just uh, take a moment here to have a look at the manual. There we go, yeah, copyright 1965 by the Singer Company. And uh, if we have a, just a quick read here, the Singer 611 represents the truly universal sewing machine that will greatly contribute to perfect domestic dressmaking. In addition to its numerous outstanding advantages, the machine now incorporates a new unique feature in that lock stitching and chain stitching can be selectively produced on the same machine. Pretty handy. Only Singer produces an automatic machine that in addition to the conventional lock stitch also sews a single thread chain stitch which can be used for basting seams thus replacing hand basting. This feature will release you from time consuming work and it reveals new aspects so far non-existent in the overall picture of the application of the modern family sewing machine. For detailed instructions page 22. Singer has the world's first automatic with slant needle and gear drive. Seeing is easier, sewing smoothest ever, no slipping or stalling. With double easy threading, has built in threading chart, handy drop in bobbin in front of needle, exclamation. <laughs> yep, some pretty outstanding new features I think here. With a built in eye level stitch chart with push button selection for whatever fancy stitch you want. You can see that in action actually if you have a look at one of my previous videos I uh, do a full service of uh, one of these machines the 631G and it shows the uh, push button uh, selection for stitches. Perfect stitching sh straight and zigzag. Needle clamp holds one or two regular needles same or different sizes for exciting twin needle stitching. Throat plate with seam guide markings held with magnets for easy removal and replacement. Pressure of presser foot can easily be adjusted according to regulator. New type spool holder ensures a smooth flow of the needle thread. That's the uh, spool holder, the uh, you know a horizontal type spool holder there. Super fine control of stitch length ensures perfect satin stitching. Hinged face plate swings open for easy access to oiling and cleaning points. Uh, back in the day when, you know, the end user 
uh, was encouraged to maintain their products uh, that they owned. Uh, uh, th things have changed a lot. <laughs> I won't say no more on that one. Anyway, hinged uh, faceplate, built-in motor with worm wheel drive, no belts required, excellent, excellent penetrating power when sewing heaviest materials without manual assistance, electric drive. Built-in light, all mechanism completely enclosed. Bunch of ladies there, I would say, getting a demo in the Singer shop there, or uh, maybe a tutor, sewing tutor. And this is the section of the manual that explains the chain stitching. That's just going through why you might want to use the chain stitch feature. Now we can see here that we're, we're set up for lock stitch. This is your standard style, you know, sewing machine set up here. We've got the bobbin here threaded with a pale blue color here. And we've got a red top needle thread here. And you know, this is your standard style here. So run a seam down here. Put this foot down. Okay, I've got quite a long stitch length here just to demonstrate this and normally at the start of a seam you would uh, do a little back tack here and at the end of the seam another back tack here just to lock the end of the seam off there and if we take a close look at this see so you can see the top thread there is the red thread there and you can see just little signs of the bobbin thread coming through from the bottom there and if we have a look underneath you can see the opposite there we've got the bobbin thread the pale blue there and we've got the top thread and red there just showing through there so that's you know like interlocking that's the top thread and, and red here and the bottom thread here they interlock and that produces a seam that's very strong and robust, you know, as you probably know. And we've got back tacking at the start and the end of the seam there. You know, there's, uh, that, that's a really good strong seam. And if, for instance, uh, one of the threads gets cut, say, we'll just uh, demonstrate that by cutting that top thread there. You know, it will eventually unravel with wear and you know if in the washing machine and things like that these threads will eventually unravel but they're resistant to it really you know you have to actually physically unpick them uh, if you want to remove that seam quickly you actually have to get in here uh, with a seam ripper or a quick unpick and just you know undo each stitch or you can get in there you can actually get in between here with the seam ripper and you can cut the stitches Right, like that. I'm cutting through the back tack there, it doesn't uh, work quite so well. But you can see what the, you know, you can see the point there. We can cut those, cut those stitches out. And you know, that's the only way really to uh, unpick the seam. It's, it's, it's a very sturdy seam. Chain stitching on the other hand is more of a temporary seam. And I'll go through uh, setting that up on the 631G here. The parts that you need are in the accessory tray. We've got a chain stitching plate here. Not to be confused with the straight stitching plate. There is a slight difference. You'll see the straight stitching plate has a flat surface here. Whereas the chain stitching plate has a small divot in here. Just by the throat plate hole there. Okay, And it looks slightly different underneath here. The straight stitch plate, you know, looks a little bit different. So this is the chain stitching plate here. And the reason we need the chain stitching plate is because it works in with this little bobbin replacement. And if you remember when we looked at the diagram, the chain stitch only has one thread and that's the top thread. So you actually replace the bobbin and you replace it with this little device here. I'll show you how that fits in a second. It's really just a matter of sliding the plate back we remove the bobbin here, we remove the plate here, it's uh, magnetically held in place, it's very handy, very easy to swap out. This is the chain stitch loop retainer and that gets placed into the 
area where the bobbin sits, like so. Push the spring-loaded lever there, and we just turn that anti-clockwise, or to the left there, until it hits the stopper. So it won't turn any further, it's hit the stopper there. And then go ahead and put the plate on here. Just pops on like so. And the only other thing to do is uh, change the threading just slightly. We come in behind this loop here, just like that. So the thread comes down from the take up in to the right hand side of the loop through out the left hand side and then down through the normal threading channels there and also we just need to make sure that we're on straight stitch here k a three here so we're ready to sew a seam there and there's no back tacking required for a chain stitch so let's just go here When you're finishing a seam here, if you're able to, you can just run straight off. And you'll see that the machine continues to chain out here. And if we have a look on the back of the fabric here, you can see the chain stitch there. So we can just trim that off. And we've got a, a very good, strong, temporary seam. One of the reasons for using a, a chain stitch, which is uh, shown in the manual actually, is for temporary seams. You know, so you might have, uh, if you're making children's clothes, you know, like back in the day, not much of it goes on these days, does it? But I guess people still do it. Uh, but back in the 60s, lots of people were making clothes for their children. And I guess if you've got a, a child that's growing fast and you know, you might have a, a dress or a skirt or something like that that the child fits uh, at the time when you make the garment, uh, but because they are growing so fast, you may want the ability to maybe let down a hem or something as they get taller. And what, so what you can do is you can sew a, a hem up with a chain stitch here, and then when the child grows and you want to let the hem down, you can unravel the seam, you know, lengthen the dress or skirt or trousers or you know could be anything really um, they also mentioned darts and things like that so yeah pretty handy so unraveling a seam is done by uh, releasing a thread at the end of the seam so this is the start of the seam up here and if we have a close look this is the underside of the material right if you have a look at the top side it just looks like normal stitching but the underside has got this chain type effect. And the way to tell the direction of sewing, you can see that they're fatter on one end than the other. So they go to a little point. Uh, the manual actually points out that it's, it's kind of like an arrowhead, you know. So you've got the pointy arrowhead part and the slightly fatter back part here. And the arrowhead points to the start of the seam. And that's important if you want to unravel the seam because this is the start of the seam up here. So you want to actually cut uh, where you want to start unraveling down this area here. But you're best off cutting it on the top side. If I just cut one of these here, so one stitch here, like that, and then pull the next stitch, pull that out like that, should be able to just grab this tail and pull it. Sometimes I find it catches a little bit under here and that that needs pulling out there. And there we go. We're starting to unravel there now. If we have a look on the underside, And there we go, seam undone. You can also partially unpick the seam as well. So we've got the start of the seam here 
and the ends over here let's say I only wanted to unpick or unravel up to this point here say halfway roughly uh, so they recommend trimming that there and then pull that thread pull it down and that this here if you leave that tail there that little tail there if I pull that it won't unravel back here that's the start of the seam it will unravel this way it won't unravel as long as that tail stays through there so you could tie that off you know and, and anchor that and then you just go back to the end of the seam here just like we did before cut a stitch there pull one through I find as I said before it's actually easier to cut from there as well and you can actually start to unravel should yeah so there it goes unraveling there and that way you can partially uh, unravel a seam you're left with the remainder there so it's pretty handy and once you're finished with the chain stitching you can easily change back to the lock stitch style just lift the press foot here and we just uh, start by taking the plate off there and then we can install either the zigzag type plate or the straight stitch plate depends what you're going to be doing and then we remove the loop retainer there just push the spring loaded little bar down make sure the feed dogs are up there just swing that out to the right there and remove the chain stitch loop retainer and then it's a matter of just reinstalling your bobbin as you normally would like so we'll put the zigzag plate back on there and we'll draw up our bobbin thread just like so and then of course we have to remember to unthread from the little loop here so just unhook that from there and now we're all set for standard lock stitch so as easy as that it's a very quick conversion and there we go converted back to lock stitch there just as easy as that so yeah it's a pretty versatile function and a versatile machine pretty good little feature really I, I like that uh, option on a sewing machine I've got a Singer 726 that does the same sort of thing it does it in a slightly different way but um, it also does a chain stitch as well which is pretty handy so thank you very much to my patrons on Patreon for your support it's greatly appreciated if you'd like to help support the channel please take a look at patreon.com forward slash sewing machines and thank you very much for watching